a daughter loved by the sea dragon, an empress blessed by the sea, and the master of Atlantis, the great empire. She is Thalassa Neptune Atlantis, the empress of the Atlantis Empire. This man named Carton also known as the Weissman was the lover of Thalassa. He told her that her empire shall last forever. And this man is the first general of Atlantis and the friend of Thalassa. He is Doom. He said that he will be with her side until the last moment. But, Thalassa was confused and asked, Is this an oath as my loyal servant? Or is my lover, Carton? Then Carton hold her hand and kiss it and said, Well, can't it be both? And Thalassa answered, Even today, my lover is very affectionate. Then she asked Doom, It's that right, my friend? And Doom replied that he feel the same way. However, Thalassa smiled and told them, You two are the only people I have. I believe this would last forever. But at that moment, one day when she entered her lover Carton's room, she was startled and confused about why does her lover and friend are together. Her tears fall down. After seeing Carton and Doom, Thalassa saw that Doom admit his feelings to Carton, and Carton is the same as him. Thalassa was shocked and confused about them both. At that moment, she was hurt by what she saw. Then she clenched her fist because she was very angry. Thalassa said, Carton, you said you loved me, but how can you betray me? I can't believe it. Did I misunderstand you too? But at the moment, Doom was just puzzled. Then Thalassa called him and he responded, and told her, please don't forgive me. But Thalassa replied, I never thought you two would betray me. And suddenly Doom was shocked and confused about how Thalassa knew. Nonetheless, Carton told her, since you already know, this can go much faster. Then he took Thalassa's hand, and she was startled when Carton bound her with a chain, and told her, Your Majesty, I have something to show you, right now. And Doom immediately closed the door. Thalassa was calling them but Doom was speechless and Carton as well. Thalassa asked him, Is this what you meant to show me? And at that moment, she was enraged, and said, How can you do this to me? How did you two? I trusted you both. I loved you with all my heart. But Carton said nothing but to say sorry to her. Then Thalassa was crying and asked him, Is that all you have to say? Carton told her that he wanted to protect the one he loved. Then Thalassa was shocked that her former lover and old friend betrayed her. At the moment, she was confused about why this happened and where she went wrong. But she was thinking that they had this plan from the beginning. However, she will make sure that she will never forgive them until everyone is dead. She'll make sure they're cursed forever. She was sealed away in sorrow and pain. For a thousand years, she will never forget this. And she's going to get her revenge. When she's free, and if she gets a chance. At that moment, someone heard her desperate pleas. The seal that surrounded her started to crumble. She was confused about what that sound was and she concluded that it was rain. And she smells blood. Thalassa wondered if the seal was broken. An injured maid was holding a little girl and she called her a princess and told her not to worry. This assassin was holding an arrow, and suddenly he hit this woman with his arrow. Even though this maid falls down to the ground she still protected the princess. And the assassin pointed a sword and told her to give up Princess Lesayan. Thalassa was confused about what was going on, and then she realized that she became a princess named Lysayan Nicefort. She wondered if this was her second life. The spell that Carton used to bind her has been lifted, and the chains he used to bind her had broken. Her body and mind are both free from the eternal presence she was tied to. But right now Thalassa is not in her home at Atlantis. Instead, she was in the land and she was protected by a maid. But one more thing that shocked her is that she became a baby. She pinched her face and she was thinking if she was dreaming. But after she pinched her face she felt the pain and she concluded that she was not dreaming. This maid told her that she will definitely take her safely to H. Wang Xiong. And she begged her to bear with it a little. Then she was confused at the moment when the maid called her a princess. But suddenly, the assassin pointed his sword at the maid, and told her, If you hand over the princess, I will spare your life. But the maid did not want to give the princess, and told him, Who do you think this is? Nice for Lesayan. Then this man told her to hand over Princess Lesrian. The duchess will be sad to call that name. And the maid was furious and told him to shut up. But the assassin had enough now and he was impatient and told the maid that he would send her back to his mother's arm. Suddenly there was blood splattered, and this little princess was startled. The small sword that was held by a maid was full of blood. That blood was from this assassin. Before he attacked the maid, she already attacked him using the knife that was stuck in her. The princess was stunned and at the back of her mind, the woman that was protecting her is not a normal maid. But now this is the limit. These assassins are only aiming at her. And if it's the body of Thalassa, she was sure, she'll take just one breath to sweep them all away. The last memory of Thalassa was a dream. Carton and Doom abandoned the Emperor. Dream of being betrayed. Even her dead body. No rotting. Even though it sucks. Even though it's so sad. 
What a useless emperor. That horrible nightmare keeps repeating every night for a thousand years. She swore she would come back anyway and get revenge. All of a sudden, one of the assassins held the maid and told her to release the princess. Then she let go of the princess and she fell. The princess immediately sat down and thought. For the background reincarnation or incarnation does not matter. What she needs to do now is to help the maid. At that moment, she started releasing her power. According to her, she will definitely survive here. And she doesn't want to die like that. Then one of the assassins told his companion to catch the princess then the maid shouted no. While they were going to the princess, she started attacking them with her drop by drop attack. This assassin was confused about it. Then the maid was shocked. And the assassin fell to his knees while touching his face. The princess was looking at them and at the back of her mind. If they can't breathe, how can they attack? Then suddenly this little princess laughed and according to her people like the sea, Anemone was wondering. At that moment, this maid was shocked and asked her, Princess, could it be you just saved me? Then she hugged the princess and her tears started to fall down, and told her, as expected, you're as special as the prophecy said. But at the back of princess's mind, saving her only then she can live. However, this maid told the princess that everyone is worried because after the prophecy she became the target of many others. Then the princess smells like the sea. Suddenly, they were both startled and the maid asked her how she was. In front of them was a huge sea, and the maid was confused about it, and the maid immediately ran while carrying the princess. While they were running, the princess was laughing and she wanted to tell the maid to stop and don't get excited. According to her, the sea feels her power too, maybe a thousand years. At that moment, this little princess was happy, and some water splashed out into her face, but suddenly she was speechless. Then she waved her hand to the water and abruptly, the maid stopped. And when she turned back, she was amazed by what she saw. Then she wondered if it was the power of the princess. But this little princess was confused because it is called her power. And according to her, she followed the power of Thalassa. However, the maid wished it was the power of a princess. Then the princess suddenly thrilled. And the maid said, So, according to the prophecy, I hope the princess will become a dragon god. Then she touched the princess' face. But the princess was confused about dragon god. Meanwhile, the maid takes her back to the royal capital and tells the princess that she should rest because she must be tired. And the princess remains clueless. She wanted to know more about the dragon god. She made a lot of noise but the maid could not understand her. Then we see the parents of the princess. They were in their mansion with a burning fire. And there was an enemy on their front. Then her mother called the maid and told her to take Nicefer to the emperor. And at that moment, her tears started to fall while saying, My daughter, you must live. Then the maid immediately carried her and they left. The princess was crying as she called her mother. All the memories of Nicefer that could not be remembered in the past time appeared. Her parents were murdered by someone and Adele saved her. Maybe right after respawning, she forgot her previous life due to the effect of being sealed. She is Thalassa as well as Nicefer now. But, with this cute little body, she's not used to it at all. Although she finds it cute too, it's inconvenient to move. She's the great Atlantis queen and becomes a baby just as small as a crab. Then she was thinking that if it's the youngest daughter of the duke, the status isn't that bad. And according to her, it was nonsense. The shape of the citadel that she saw while fleeing was very familiar. The country she built in her previous life, the empire she built. At the capital of Atlantis, the country was founded by two traitors, from queen to duke's daughter. Furthermore, she was confused about how she behaved like a duke's daughter. All of a sudden, the walls had big cracks, and there were spider webs in every corner. The entire building she was in seems to be quite glooming and uncared for, and it has a sea next to the building. But according to the princess, Carton and Doom are two damn traitors, and she will take revenge. At that moment, Adele entered the room and she was glad that the princess was awake. Then she told the princess, I'm not a duke's daughter so I don't seem familiar. She smiled and carried the princess and said, it's time to eat. Princess, you must eat quickly and grow up. And at the back of her mind, she has to grow up fast. If she wants to revenge Carton, she must know what kind of spell he used. Then she clenched her fist and she wanted to eat rice, and she looked up to Adele. This maid was amazed of her that she eat jam jam very well, but she was shaking because she don't want to eat jam jam, and she wants rice instead. Nevertheless, Adele couldn't understand her, and she was glad and said even the princess shaking is cute too. According to her, if Mr. Ninnies saw this look, he would really like it. But suddenly, Adele was startled. Then she immediately put the princess into her crib and told her that her two brothers will probably be back soon and this little princess was confused. She was startled at the moment. Adele explained that her brothers was in the battle with the Yaojiu pirates, and she heard it ended the day before yesterday. 
but all of a sudden the princess was shocked when she felt the essence of the man who was about to meet her. The servants declared that the king was coming, and the only thing that the princess can focus on is the power of the sea dragon radiating from him. She wondered how can such power exist, unless this is Atlantis. Then she reminds someone she knew and hated very much, and that was Carton. The king entered her room and this princess was so terrified but at the back of her mind, it can't be Carton. But still, she was confused about who is this man. However, the maid paid respect to the king. Then he was confused at the moment when he saw the princess and asked this child, is it the final tribute? And at the back of his mind, it looks like his mother. The king asked the maid if she saw the Lesayan couple. But Adele answered that a lowly guy led the lady to hide. Then suddenly, she was silent. And after a minute she told him that she was not sure what happened to those two. Then he asked her if she mean they targeted the prophecy. Something like belly dares. And then he squeezed his fist. The princess breathed and she was confused about what was going on. Then the king was startled when he noticed that the princess was looking at him. And he immediately closed his eyes. However, the king stated that the funeral of the duke and his wife was right after the return of the two crown prince. Then he also told Adele to find a good day to celebrate since she can also join. Then Adele replied, Thank you for your grace. And this child is an important and precious existence to cure dragon mania. Take good care of this baby, the king stated. But at the back of Nicefer's mind, she's not a universal medicine. And according to the king, fortunately, the crown prince has three options. But Nicefer wonders that she's not the only option. If manic, add sea urchin, spines, and seaweed, then make medicine or drink it. Then she was confused about why keep arresting ordinary people. At the back of his mind, this man really looks a lot like Carton but his personality is completely opposite. Then Nicefer was moving, and she was wondering who the person on her front was. Then the king told her that he was a friend of Nicefer's parents, Garzan Lazayan and Ninis Lazayan, and he is the emperor of the country called Kaorton. And suddenly, the little princess was shocked. She was confused if this man was Agrio Rune Kaorton. Then she looked at the king and at the back of his mind, even now the king was naming himself by the name of the country. And suddenly, the princess shivered. As she stated, if he covets the throne, she is willing to give it up. She wondered if this emperor was a descendant of Carton. Then she remembered doom at the moment. She was furious and according to her, this bastard met another woman. All of a sudden, he held Nicefer, and this little princess was shocked. Then she was moving because she didn't want to be lifted. But the prince was confused about her. Then Nicefer was crying and thinking that she can't control his strength. But the prince didn't understand her. And as he stated, maybe the princess is not hungry or bored. Or else she needs a diaper change. The king smiled but the little princess was just looking at him. According to the king, this baby is very strange but also very interesting. It's reacting like it understands what he was saying. But this servant smiled and asked, isn't the lady still a child? how to communicate. Then the king answered, try saying it again. But the servant bowed and said, I deserve to die, your majesty. And the king asked him, what do you fear even if you continue? However, he put the princess into her crib and told her that it turns out that she can't understand everything. Then he wondered if the princess was also afraid of him. And the princess just closed her eyes. She was so confused about him. All of a sudden, the king got an idea. Then he touched the head of Nicefer, and he suddenly comforted Nicefer. The servant and maid were speechless at the moment, and Nicefer was silent and she was still confused about the king. Going back to the past when Nicefer was not born yet, her mother told Agrio Kaorton if unfortunately, we have to leave this child too soon. Please protect her, so that our child is not sacrificed. In this way, Nicefer can break the curse of the royal family. But remembering these words the king started crying, and according to him, this time he can't do anything expressing his feelings and hatred towards himself saying that he can't protect anything, whether it's the death of his sister. Then he asked the servant, how was the ceremony prepared? What about the child? And the man answered, everything is fine tonight, sir. There are no more chases. But, your majesty, is that child really the daughter of the dragon king? The servant said if that child becomes a sacrifice. But he did not finish his words and the king told him to stop. However, at the royal palace of the Kaorten Empire, there was a curse that was cast here 1,000 years ago. The hallucinations will stimulate killing. The whole body will writhe in pain, tormented by madness. Successive emperors struggled with insanity, which occurred time and time again. So the royal family began to offer sacrifices, and the sacrifices were Duke Lesayan. Lesayan's ancestor, the dragon lady is said to have cured the first emperor's madness. Her wish before death, one day not far inside Lesayan, a new dragon girl will be born. Only then will the sins of the Kaorten royal family be forgiven. 
and everything will return to the original order according to the legend of the Kaorten Empire. While they wait for the new dragon girl if the child is born in the Lesayan house, keeping it as a sacrifice, it will prevent the crown prince's madness. Even so, she will be handled by him in the end. Is it true that it will be possible to wash away this sin? But who knows if that child is really a dragon's child? On the day the crown prince turns 19, according to him, time to sacrifice it. It will save them from all curses. While he was looking at the baby, he thought he was dreaming. This small and soft existence is so adorable. Chubby cheeks, her eyes were filled with discomfort. Until those plump lips, the prince did an effort so that the princess will be happy. But she didn't smile anymore. And the princess was just puzzled. However, the king was serious at the moment. The servant told him, it says in the book that, if you did that, the children would laugh, right? But the princess was confused about what she was looking at. Then the king was thinking that the person who wrote the book must be a scammer. The princess wanted to say something but at the back of her mind, what if she can freely use the emperor's power? Then the king was curious, and he looked closely at the princess and thought about what he needed to do to make her laugh. According to him, the eyes of the princess seemed to want something. Then he told the princess, if you smile, I'll decorate this room beautifully, and give you another maid. But the princess doesn't need a room, and she saw Adele begging her. Then she sighed and she was doing this for Adele. Anyway, these Kaorten people are really annoying. And suddenly, she thought of Carton telling her, when she has to hold back, just smile. And when she smiles, the whole world will bow to you. All of a sudden, Nicefer smiled at him. But the king was enraged because he knew that the princess called him dad. The maid was shocked and said, the princess called you dad. And according to the servant, he thinks that the princess saw the king as her dad. But the king told the princess that she looked more like her mother when she smiled. Then he gave nice for a stuffed toy and said, take it. If the child is born into the Kaorten royal family, I give you this stuffed turtle as a gift, symbolizing longevity. The princess immediately hugged the toy and at the back of her mind, imprisoned for sacrifice but still has a long life, that's ridiculous. Then the king told her to keep it carefully. But the princess just sighed. The king is already out of Nicefer's room. While he was walking one servant called him. But he raised his hand and said, I was just stunned. Be quiet. At the moment, his madness has begun. Then he started sweating. And he seems to be weak. The servant asked him if he was okay but he was silent. So the maid said to hurry and take him back to the palace. But the king was furious at the moment while the servants were smiling at him. Then suddenly, they were all puzzled when the king told them, I knew, you were Roxborough spies. That's why I brought all of you here on purpose. Don't you know what? Then there were black flames surrounding him. But the servants told him, Your majesty, you have misunderstood. Then the king raised his finger and said I've confirmed the life of that child. Also thought of sending another assassin. And the assassins were about to execute them. The madness is coming, you must now become my sacrifice. They were all shocked and according to the man with brown hair, the king is the spy. But the maid was confused about it. Then all of a sudden, they were all executed and their blood splattered. Even in the face of the king, there was blood on it. And one of the assassins gave him a face towel. Then he wiped the blood on his face and said, Ninnies, don't worry, I will protect her till the end. At that moment, while Nicefer was sleeping, someone touched her face and said, This little thing was born. No fear at all. Then the other man told him not to touch her arbitrarily. It hurts. And he replied, What do you think I am? Think I destroy everything. I also know how to take care of a baby. And suddenly, Nicefer was awake because of the noise she heard. Then she was startled and confused about who the people in her front were. However, these two are Nathaniel Lazayan and Hybrid Lazayan. Nicefer wondered if they were her brother since they looked like her. Then Nathaniel told his brother that the baby was staring at him as if curious. But Hybert asked him, how do you know that? You mean her innate power is very strong? Then Nicefer was confused about it. She waves her hand and asks herself if Hybert can feel the fortune of Thalassa in her. And also she wants to know more details. Nathaniel is wondering and says, looking at your hands, you seem to want to play with us. But according to Nicefer, she doesn't want to play. Nonetheless, Nathaniel told Hybrid that he reads some children's books while on the boat. At this stage, she already knows how to call her brother. But Hybrid concludes that it was impossible. Then Nathaniel told Nicefer, Appa, try to say Appa. She was happy but Nicefer was sad. And Nathaniel thought that it was a bit too much. Then Hybrid told him, from now on she will grow fast so it won't take long. Because she is also of the blood of the Coral Fairy Clan. The Coral Fairy Clan, they are the strongest fighting race in the sea. They absolutely do not avoid a fight. They are born with a strong fighting spirit that knows no defeat. From an early age, they show a talent for fighting.
but most of them are so pretty humans, wanting to enslave them, rushed in fearlessly. Nathaniel was confused about why is that so. Their mom is against such assassins because of the coral fairy lineage. Then Hybrid explained that the mature coral fairies, despite becoming the strongest fighting race, but they will grow very slowly until one year after birth. The coral fairies like them are the same. At this speed, maybe she's stronger than us. Maybe she's stronger than mom, Hybrid stated. Then suddenly they were both silent. But according to Nathaniel, he still couldn't believe it. Their mom is so strong, and he was confused about who attacked their parents after all. But Hybrid told him that he didn't know. So what reason? Let me know. You are so smart, with my mind, I can't understand, Nathaniel stated. Then Hybrid told him that the Lessian's enemies are so many that it was hard to count. There are even prophecies, it must be a trick of someone in a hurry. Nathaniel asks, well, the prophecy that she is the child of a dragon. According to Nicefer, if she is the child of the dragon, she remembers hearing Adele and Her Majesty talk. Then she was confused about whether that is a prediction about her. I remember that prophecy but I don't understand what it means, Nathaniel stated. But according to Hybrid, five priests in Lamet said an identical prophecy. That's for sure. Nicefor was curious about it, and he holds Hybrid's finger. Then Nathaniel asked his brother do you think she understands what we said? And Hybrid replied, oh, how do I know that? This is the content of the prophecy about you. When the appointed time comes, the crack will open. After prolonged sacrifice, the purest power will bloom. Then Nathaniel just scratched his head. The daughter of the sea after blessing baby dragon, the last one will die with respect. An unimaginable prosperity will come, begging for forgiveness and mercy. However, the pain of repentance is still where the red earth is high, the land where the silence fears sleep. It's right to bring them back where they came from, because she is their savior. But suddenly, the little princess was confused about the daughter of the sea, and according to him, it was talking to her or it was like her story. While these two brothers are talking, Nicefer was thinking that the end of the long sacrifice apparently means the Lessian clan. The purest power, of course that is the power of the sea. Moreover the daughter of the sea. According to the princess, if this is not her story then what is it? Nicefer Lessian and the queen of Atlantis is she. And this refers to Thalassa Neptune Atlantis. It is because of her mood that the object of the prophecy is like Thalassa. As if she knew in advance that she would be reincarnated at this time. In La Methoxy where the earth god is worshipped, is strange to beg for forgiveness from her. While he was thinking, all of a sudden, Nathaniel carried her and she was shocked. Nicefer was annoyed and she was moving her head. And according to her, no matter how she looked, she couldn't find any sign. She was confused about how they know this is a dragon. Then suddenly, Hybrid took Nicefer from Nathaniel and told him, You must wait until this baby wakes up. After waking up she is the dragon god. If you make an oath to the crown prince, then the oath will be neutralized. Because that's the key of the dragon god legend. And Nathaniel was confused and replied, Then his highness the crown prince is still not five years old. So if you take 19 minus 5, it's 14, am I right? Then Hybrid told him, that's good. While Hybrid slowly put down Nicefer, Nathaniel asked him, Supposed in 14 years if the Macni wakes up, what will happen to us? Then Hybrid answered, What should I do? Get out of this place. If the oath is neutralized, there is no need to sacrifice. And suddenly, Nathaniel was silent. After a few minutes, according to him, it's so lucky and he really hates death. Then Hybrid asked him, How were you born in our time? And Nathaniel answered, It's been too long since the dragon god was born. We all gave up. He smiled at the princess and said, Thank you so much, Popo. We will protect you until then. Nicefer was stunned and thought that her brothers were scared of death. After all, they're just kid sacrifices, their parents died. Of course, Nicefer too, even when she's not aware. The contact memories to parents in the body of Nicefer still. How rich is her dad in love? Her mom protects her. But at that moment, Nicefer started crying. Even though she's over 1,000 years old, she's like a child in this body. Nathaniel was surprised when he saw that the princess suddenly took a nap. He wanted to play with Nicefer but he will definitely come tomorrow. And he told Nicefer that tomorrow he will bring some very interesting toys. Then he walked away and closed the door. Nicefer was lonely at the moment, although she loves to play. But she felt very pain and she wants to help from someone. A few days later, Nathaniel came back with a smile on his face and he brought something. And Nicefer was stunned. After that day, he comes to visit her every day. Meanwhile, she started babbling and the second brother even nicknamed her Popo. But she rather wants to see the sea than these toys. Nathaniel told her, Why are you so melancholy, Popo? Even when your brother kisses you, you smile. 
but Nysfer was enraged and kicked him in the face. Then she sighed while Nathaniel was just touching his face. Suddenly, the princess pointed his finger to the door, and she wants Nathaniel to go. But Nathaniel just smiled and his understanding of the princess was that she wanted to see outside the window. Then Nathaniel carried her and she was startled at the moment. This is Thalassa's hometown and the place she loves. She touched the glass and according to her, she wanted to go there. Like in the past, swimming with fish in the sea and she wants to sing with mermaids. The moment of sleeping on the back of a turtle is still clear like she can't come back again. She wanted to go out there but Nathaniel told her it was very dangerous and put her down. According to her, if it was Adele she would have allowed her. Adele told her that she would help prepare for her parents' funeral. As she stated, she really can't do anything with this body. Suddenly, she saw a book. Then she was startled and according to her, it was a book of the dragon god. She pointed to the book because she wants it. And luckily, Hybrid understands her. He was about to give the book to her. But it was suddenly withdrawn by Hybrid. The princess was annoyed. And Hybrid asked her if she wanted to see how it is. But Nysfer was trembling. However, Hybrid told her, if so, then kiss me on the cheek. Nysfer was shocked but Hybrid said that according to the book Parenting, infants through physical contact with parents, they will feel the love and form a love relationship. Their parents died, so he had no choice but to take that position. He was about to give the book to her and told her, if you don't like it, I'll take it back. She was shivering and at the back of her mind, kissed him on the cheek while she was the queen of Atlantis, though she let it go. Then Hybrid carried her and smiled at her. And suddenly, the princess kissed him. Then Hybrid was thrilled and said, This is the heart of parents. You're really good after all. Nysfer was annoyed at the moment because Hybrid was talking nonsense, and she really wanted the book. But at that moment, Nysfer was reading the book and she was so happy. Suddenly, a man appeared above her. He is Teo, received his highness's orders, and was assigned a secret mission to escort the little crown princess. His duty is to protect her from assassination. As an escort, talking or pretending to know that is absolutely impossible. According to him, the princess is so cute, and he wanted to say hello even just once. He was impressed by the cuteness of this princess. Her pretty nose, lovely hair, even her feet are cute and chubby, and she is so cute and adorable. He was curious about her because she is just a child but already reading books. But he didn't know that it was Thalassa as well. While the princess was opening the book, she suddenly wondered if the emperor kept his promise. And according to her, she didn't know there would be an escort either. Then she continued reading. This is the first emperor of Kaorton. As one of the living apostles in the ancient empire of Atlantis, the empire was sunk into the sea of Atlantis and disappeared along with the great culture. And only two apostles survived. Emperor Kaorton founded the country with writings taken from the Temple of the Sea Dragon. Instead of that, he will be subject to the curse of the Sea Dragon. The Crown Princess cured the first emperor's mania. She is the ancestor of the Duke of Lesayan. Before she died, the Crown Princess said that the new Crown Princess would save the Crown Prince. According to the information, the next generation of the Crown Princess after awakening must make an oath with the Crown Prince. Suddenly, this little princess was shocked. Her country's Atlantis will sink once every ten years, then resurface to the mainland, like the boundary between the sea and the land. The people of Atlantis are familiar with the sea. They can breathe even if they are underwater. Furthermore, this curse was strange. It's like someone created and left it. According to the predetermined sequence, the oath was taken in the central sanctuary of the church Lamet. However, marriage can only be made after the crown princess turns 15 years old. The princess was thinking that even the method of dispelling the curse had been clearly prepared. She wanted to know what's the reason and what is the curse of the sea dragon. It's a pain that every bone in the body feels like being cut apart. The person next seems strangled and can't breathe, haunted by hallucinations. Hear the voice of a young girl. The curses, the pain, and the resentment are mostly the same. Hear the screams and curses of the young girl. At the moment, she was scared of reading the book, but she promises to break the curse and run away. She was thinking if she really need to marry the crown prince. But according to her, if she grows up quickly, it'll be great. After a few minutes, this little princess falls asleep. However, the maids came and Adele told them, thank you to the two of you who helped with funeral preparations. Then she immediately cheeked Nysfer and said, looks like she's already tired. We can just clean up and go out. Then she slowly gets the book and put a blanket on Nysfer. Meanwhile, when the princess was awake, she was mad that she didn't notice that Adele came to her room. She didn't know she was so sleepy. Suddenly, she heard someone crying and asking for help. According to her, she heard this sound before. She raised her hand while saying, Help what? Tell me. I'm listening. Then she was shocked when the voice said, That's hurt. Very painful. It's like the body is torn apart. 
The princess sat down and she was confused about how can she help the person. All of a sudden, she saw the person in her front. According to her, this is an illusion. But if she was confused if it is not an illusion so it was real. This man was crying and telling her to help him. At the moment he was begging her, and the princess was startled. But when she extended her hand, the man suddenly disappeared and there were flames on it. She was shocked and confused about what's happening. And who is this man asking for help? The next day, she was still confused about what happened last night. Was it an illusion? If not then he must have been a great pain. She was thinking if she will see ever that child again. Suddenly, Adele told her, My lady, you might have known this, but today is the funeral of the Duke and Duchess. The reason for the Duke being ambushed is still unknown, so we don't know when we will be in danger. That is why I'll dress you in safer clothes. Is that fine? Then she was startled and curious about the safer clothes. Adele told her that they should wear a warm jacket since it was the beach and the wind will blow strongly. Then she shows her the dress. She told the princess that she should bring armor to the funeral to prevent assassins. And Adele will also wear her armor too. Nice for finally wears it and at the back of her mind, Adele is a normal maid who deals with assassination and probably also uses armor. She was very curious about Adele's background. However, her country Atlantis always floats on water. They are all from the sea. So after they die, they will go back to the sea. According to the princess, it's the same here. From funeral attire to manners, maybe they are the same in terms of customs. Nonetheless, this man said, Today, we have lost two heads of Lesayan, the guardians of Keorton. Fortunately, their children are still here. The sea god's blessing is still here. So as not to repeat this pain, pray for the destiny of Lesayan. Now let them leave. It is so painful for Nathaniel that their parents leave since her parents told him that they will travel when he comes back. He couldn't save his parents. According to Nicefer, this is unforgivable. She would definitely pay this back. She was enraged at the moment. If that's the case then she has to strengthen her power first. As she stated, she will try to absorb the vitality of the sea as much as possible. But she doesn't know when they will show up again. Her nose became itchy, and suddenly she sneezed. When she sneezed, lightning emerged above. According to Nicefer, this isn't good because her nose was so itchy that she couldn't control her strength. It seems that God is angry over the death of the duke and his wife. This is definitely a harbinger of calamity. She was confused about how they will get to Lesayan now if the child is not the crown princess of the dragon. There is nothing that this child cannot hear, seriously. She was enraged at the moment because of the noise she heard. She was thinking if she should cut their mouths off. Suddenly she remembered Carton telling her, Smile, your majesty. It won't work if you just cut them off because you're not satisfied. If you just laugh, everyone will become your majesty's prisoner. Then she was thinking that even though the emperor used to like to smile, what if she tries for once? But this man said, Actually, I also understand that strengthening the Lesayan family. Huh? All of a sudden, this little princess smiled. Then these people were puzzled and thrilled. Meanwhile, at the memorial party, Nicefer was silent at the moment. Then these two ladies were amazed by her because she was cute and she was not even crying. However, the princess became confused when she heard this lady ask her friend if her majesty stays like this, will there be an empress? The lady was worried, even though the crown prince is here. According to the lady, the crown prince is so weak that he couldn't be here. They are both worried that the crown prince is gradually becoming more aggressive. They heard that the prince had executed a maid a day before yesterday. He wore gloves, which were covered in blood, and swung his sword. They were thinking maybe because of the mania. And according to them, the prince suffers and cries every day. Nonetheless, the princess was puzzled at the moment. And she was thinking if this kid is the crown prince. But the crown prince is just five years old. And this kid looks like he is seven years old. According to Nicefer, he doesn't look fierce enough to execute a servant. But she has to hear it directly. Since he always calls for her, this time the princess will call for him. While she was closing her eyes, she was calling the rumor crown prince. Then this kid asked for help again. The princess was suddenly shocked after she saw the kid in her front. She pointed at him and wondered if he is the boy who will become her husband. However, while the maids were fixing the king's clothes, this man told him, Your Majesty, the memorial ceremony for the duke and his wife has begun. Then the king replied, Let's go. What about Rospero? And according to this man, he heard that they had just arrived. The crown prince came too, but as stated by the king, he was just curious. Then this man asked him, Your Majesty, do you still think that they assassinated the duke and his wife? And the king answered, At least it's another kingdom's actions that are hostile to Keorton. The awakening of the dragon lord will bring prosperity to the empire. He must have been scared. If so, then the next person to succeed in the Rosborough empire is the top suspect. 
Then the king asked how the investigation was. According to this man, he checked all three assassin organizations in the empire, and no evidence was found. Such a shame. If there was evidence, I would have beheaded the crown prince of Rossboro today, the king stated. However, he told his servant that they need to go. The king wanted to see that arrogant face. Going back to the princess, at that moment, she was shocked when she saw this kid. Then she saw the wounds of this boy. She was worried about the kid. But suddenly, she heard the sound of a trumpet. And this kid was asking for help. But he disappeared and Nicefer was startled. At that moment, she was silent. According to her, there are still many things that she hasn't said. Nonetheless, the king arrived and said, Thank you, everyone, for taking your time and coming here. To commemorate the deaths of loyalists to Kaorton and my important relatives. I heard that a guest from afar has arrived. I shall accept greetings from this guest. Then someone was stepping in. And the princess was curious about who was coming in. Then she told Adele to pick her up. At that moment, Adele carried Nicefer. And their guests arrived. This kid said, Prince Gunther Zen, Roxborough of Roxborough. I shall send my regards to the Emperor of Kaorton. Then the king was thankful to him for coming. But he told the kid, let's see. I finally found you. I don't know if you came here to mourn or to check if they're dead. Nicefer was shocked at the moment. Then this kid said, Nothing can measure the great pain of your majesty. I am also a child, so I feel the pain of losing both parents. I just came to share my condolence with the young master. The king asked him, How can you talk so freely in front of him? That's a commendable point. Then this kid smiled and showed gifts to the king. But Nicefer was confused about Roxborough if the country which is hostile to Kaorton was here. But what the emperor said back then, is he suspecting the culprit who executed her parents? And if the Emperor Roxborough is the real culprit, it is unforgivable. And according to her, she must defeat them politically and diplomatically. Because she was shivering. Adele was confused about her and asked her if she was hungry or needed to change her diaper. But this kid glanced at her. And according to him, Nicefer is the child in the rumor. Then he came closer to Adele and Nicefer. As stated by Nicefer, she has seen this face before. Even in Atlantis, those dark eyes, rigid and short-tempered are not enough to describe him. He answered the emperor very emphatically. Then Nicefer was glad. But suddenly she became mad because that kid stared at her. According to her, even if it's 1,000 years later, it's still too soon for someone like him to mess with her. And that person should be careful. Maybe her body won't be able to avoid the battle it's been through. Then this kid said, How weird, when I look at her like this, she's nothing special. How could a seer follow her? Even if I look at her closely, she's just a normal child. All of a sudden, the princess was mad at him and pulled his hair. Then this kid was puzzled. Adele and the king were both shocked. This kid was on the floor, and the princess was so enraged at him at the moment. But the crown prince was so furious, and said, How dare a child pea-sized? Suddenly, the princess hit him in the face. He was confused about how that child could turn around. He raised his hand and wanted to hurt the princess. But he stopped when the princess started to cry. Then Adele asked him, Your Highness, the Crown Prince, what are you even doing? Are you threatening a newborn child? But according to the Crown Prince, it was a misunderstanding. The princess hit him on purpose. However, Hybrid told him to stop and asked, What are you doing? How could a child possibly do that? The Crown Prince was shocked and he didn't expect that he would intend to hurt a newborn child. Even though he was furious, he could do nothing and he just clenched his fist. The princess smirked and at the back of her mind, the crown prince must practice more before coming here. Meanwhile, the king was walking with these two men. He was glad and said, seriously, she's an exceptional child. I felt very comfortable when the arrogant boy got hit even though it was the wrong thing to do. The man on his right side told him that slap was very cool. And the man on his left side asked, how could she make such a nice sound with her pretty hands? Then the king answered, she's really cute. If I could turn back time, I wish I could see that look again. And the three of them were thrilled while they imagined the princess. Then the man with gray hair told him, After the death of his majesty, this is the first time I saw you smile like that. And the king glared at him and replied, Is that so? After losing the sister he admires the most. He even lost his loved ones, Gazan and Ninnis. Now all he needs to do is to protect them. The prince was left behind by his sister in Nicefer, the child who was left behind by Gazin and Ninnis. However, the king asked him, did the preparations to bring the maid to the sacrificial castle go well? Then the man answered, yes, it has been selected through checks, so you don't have to worry. According to the king, there's nothing special about the sacrifice ritual. Then he told the man to report the current situation. And this man told him, the lady, she dances and shakes her, but when she's in a good mood. Then the king was shocked. Going back to the Atlantis, Dome and Thalassa were lying while Carton was sitting down. 
Carton told her, Your Majesty, if you keep looking at me like that, I can't concentrate. Then Philasa replied, Sorry, I'm staring because your hands are beautiful. I want to hold it like this. According to Carton, he cannot accept an apology from the Emperor that easily. And Philasa said, Yeah, yeah, Carton is right. At the moment, Doom was silent. As stated by Philasa, these bad guys, how can they change so much? She was confused about why they betrayed her. Philasa said I curse you to forever remember this, even in your dream. She extends her hand, while she was crying, and suddenly, she remembered her country, Atlantis. At that moment, she was crying, and if that's the case, she has no other choice but to enter a secret library. The other day, these three maids told her, please help us in the future, lady. However, she was startled. When she saw the sea, she wanted to get down from her chair. She was puzzled after hearing a sound, and suddenly, this kid appeared on her front. Then she asked him, are you hurt today too? Please don't be in pain. They both wanted to touch each other, and suddenly, they were both startled. Nicefer is awake at the moment, and she was confused if it was a teleportation or a letter. Then she saw the prince lying on the bed. She was thinking if this kid was dead. Then she came closer and checked him. She feels relief after she knows that this kid is not dead. She touched the kid's forehead. Then she was shocked when she noticed that there were dragon horns on his head. She was confused if the crown prince was a dragon's descendant, but she noticed that there was anybody around him, and according to her, no matter how much she looked at him, she still didn't think he was five years old. All of a sudden, Nicefer was shocked. According to her, his eyes, nose, and lips are so beautiful. Even though Nathaniel and Hybrid are handsome, this child is even something more. This appearance needs to be protected at all costs. Then she came closer, and taking care of this kid, suddenly this kid awake and they were both startled at the moment. However, Nicefer still took care of him and said, no matter how vigilant you are, to me, you're just a wounded seal. But this kid was confused about what she was saying and where a baby like her came from. Then Nicefer was thinking that maybe this kid was sick because of the mania. At that time, it was clearly stated in the book that there was no other way except the elf. Based on that, the crown prince's mania might be relieved before the elf, but she was worried about how she can touch the kid since he was so sick. She was puzzled, when this kid made him lie on his chest. According to her, she can't breathe, and she stood up and had a deep breath. Then she bites him. She was startled when she saw the kid was awake, but he just sighed. This little princess asked, why don't you ask for help like always? And according to her, it is perhaps because she can read his mind. But even if he is stubborn, she still likes him. The next day, when she was awake, she was startled. When she saw this kid sitting on a chair, and as she stated, this is the aura of a sea dragon. This boy is very powerful. His strength is the same as hers at the age of her previous life. But on the contrary, she feels like the whole ocean hates him. Then she approached the kid and she was looking for the power that was hidden. And the kid was about to show it to her and she felt comfortable at the moment. This kid told her, how magical. Seeing you makes my heart feel lighter. My pain has also been relieved. And then she asked her if she was the daughter of the dragon in that legend. Then she answered, yeah, maybe. This kid told her, do you remember? It's about the name that we discussed yesterday. The more you grow up, the more powerful your name becomes. Then he said thank you to Nicefer because of her he can now breathe. However, he asked Nicefer if she was hungry and then she should drink milk. But, Nicefer told him that she hates it. According to her, the milk is so bland and she wants a dish of delicious beefsteak. She wants to eat something like avocado grilled shrimp. At least it has to be food for children. Then this kid was thinking at the moment, and suddenly, he smiled at Nicefer and said, Oh, sorry, I heard that. So you want to eat food for children? But Nicefer was shocked that this kid heard and understood her. This kid told her, When you think strongly enough, the words can be conveyed to me. Then his servant came and said, You called for me, Crown Prince. And suddenly, this man was shocked when she saw Princess Lesayan. Nonetheless, the Crown Prince commands him to bring a meal in this child's food. Then this man immediately left to get food. This kid smiled and said, I'm very curious about your name. Should I call someone who knows you? And Nicefer was thinking and at the back of her mind, she could tell him. But she was startled at the moment. When this kid told her, this isn't good, I don't want to stay away from you. What should I do? But Nicefer told him, please don't. You cannot adopt me, right? As they looked at the smoke, Nicefer said, if these are just names, then I can tell you mine. Then the crown prince suddenly knew her name and he also introduced himself. According to Nicefer, she's not surprised because he can do it easily with his eyes closed. However, she was confused if this kid was five years old. She was startled looking at the crown prince. Suddenly, Sion told her that he is five years old, and Nicefer was shocked. She was even confused when Sion heard her again. 
He told her, your eyes look like they could tell things. Actually, royalty is more mature than ordinary people. I am the son of the former emperor. The current emperor is my mother's brother. Then Nicefer was puzzled. According to Sion, she's so cute. You can perceive and rely on the people around you, but you can't say anything out loud. You're melting everyone's hearts with your beauty, Sion stated. Then Nicefer was thinking, as long as it's Sion, she can get married to him. Even if it's a curse or something, she can break it and get a divorce afterward. Most importantly, it's such a shame to leave Sion alone like this. All of a sudden, Nathaniel and Adele came. Nathaniel was worried about his sister but suddenly he was shocked after he saw the crown prince. Nonetheless, the food was already there. And Sion was enraged at the moment and said, I never told you to bring the meal together with that impediment. Then the maid immediately kneeled and bowed down and said, I just brought the meal in here, your highness. Please, please have mercy on me, your highness. Nicefer was shocked and silently asked herself, is this enough for him to punish the maid? But the crown prince was just speechless. However, Nicefer was so hungry at the moment and she wanted to eat the food on her front. Suddenly she started crying and said, give me the meal and don't kill those people. But his brother couldn't understand her. Then Sion was looking at her while she was saying that the person who brought the meal is a good person. Then he told the servant to get out and she was thankful to the princess. Nicefer was so excited to eat her meal. Then Sion started feeding her. And Nicefer was thrilled because of the excellent food. Sion asked her if the food is good and Nicefer enjoyed the food so much that she wanted to eat it again. But they were both startled at the moment. Because Nathaniel said, Your Highness, after she's done with her meal, I shall take Nicefer back home. Our family has been very worried. According to Nicefer, they must have been very worried because she suddenly disappeared. But she was thinking, I refuse, instead of being a sacrifice, I mean, it seems like Nicefer also wants to be here, Sion stated. Then Nathaniel was shocked. As per Nicefer, Sion has been enduring this all by himself all the time. Even though he may look fine on the outside, he was trying to overcome the pain. However, Sion told her that he will give her what she wants every day, and he was begging her to stay by his side. As stated by Nicefer, no matter what she thinks, she cannot leave this boy alone. Then Sion carried Nicefer. Then these servants were gossiping at them. According to them, they cannot live together like that. And while they were walking, they clearly heard what they said. The lady asked, what if his highness hurts the princess? Then the man answered, the princess is going to be the sacrifice today. All of a sudden, Sion called Joseph and commanded him to hit that person 30 times and fire him. Then his servants immediately followed him and this man was begging to forgive him. He admit that he was wrong, but it was already too late and Sion didn't listen to him and they both walked away. At the moment, they were riding a carriage. Sion asked her, do you also think that I'm too much? Then Nicefer answered, no, you did the right thing. According to Sion, if it's just him in the rumor, he can leave it alone. But they even dragged Nicefer into that, and that's unforgivable. And Nicefer told him that such acts should be punished. I told you, you are magical, Sion stated. He also asked Nicefer if there was anything about her that he did not know. Then she was shocked at the moment and she could not answer his question. That's all for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 1000 likes and don't forget to comment and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Until next time.